Hey everyone and welcome to Past Life Present Power with Derek Jameson. This is the beginning of the second season of my series. In the first season I focused on the interviews that I had conducted with people I had done past life regressions on so that you could learn from their experiences. Now we might have a few of those conversations during this series because I think it's always great to bring in people who who are doing past life work on their own, even other practitioners or people who are doing work in the Akashic Record. Uh, but this particular season, we're going to focus on more of the education aspect. I really want to teach you all about past lives, future lives, parallel lives, and all the different subsects that um, kind of come together so that we can understand what past lives really are and all of the grandiosity it entails. Um, it is pretty unlimited and it's really going to be based on what your level of consciousness is at this particular time in your journey. So if something doesn't fully make sense to you, well, that's okay. It's not necessarily meant to. It's going to be something that expands consciousness. And really, that's what we're all doing here on this planet. We are expanding our consciousness. We are evolving towards greater states of joy and happiness and understanding ourselves more. Because the more that we can understand who we are, what we're doing here, the more we can really be able to lay in and set Settle into our purposes here on earth. And I really do believe we have multiple purposes. So as I unfold these episodes, it's really going to be conversational. I'm just going to allow whatever wants to come forward to come forward and be able to be the information uh, that is most necessary at the time. And in this first episode, we're just going to focus on an overview of past lives and all of the different levels that it um, contains. So we might talk a little bit about the Akashic Records. We might talk about understanding past lives a little bit. It's going to you know, be more of the surface level um, so that way we can create an introduction to the episodes that will follow. Now those of you that are just joining me for the very first time and don't know who I am, I am a QHHT quantum healing hypnosis past life practitioner. So I take people into really deep levels of trance or meditation, if you will, so that they can receive the information from their Akashic Records or their soul's history. So if if Akashic Records is, you know, the, if this is the first time you're hearing Akashic Records, it's what your soul's history is um, and all the people and all the things and all the places uh, that it entails in all directions of time and space. Now, as we're accessing information from our own Akashic Records, we are tuning into the things that we need to see. So everything is vibration in the universe, right? We're all vibrating at specific frequencies. And there are specific frequencies that are alive within us, that are active. And when we um, experience something in life, we're typically vibrating within resonance of those things. So if there's a big event that's taking place, a lot of the times you have parallels that are connected to that at the same time. Connecting into past lives or seeing this connection to past lives allows you to understand why you're having a current life experience now. And that can be really beneficial for healing, for understanding, or really plain curiosity. Not only that is... The, these experiences will activate you. So they'll allow you to turn on specific codes within your DNA that uh, have not been awakened yet. And it's simply the awareness that you get that will awaken them. So everybody's different and um, everybody connecting into past lives is going to receive something different. You can't put a one size fits all label on it. Uh, so we're going to unfold and just talk about past lives, future lives, parallel lives, and kind of structure it like that. Um, so I do want to go back a little bit and just kind of give you um, the awareness of what even, why I even do this. Well, when I was a kid, I did get involved with spiritual work um, kind of by accident. I had a metaphysical shop that was at the end of the street and I would go there. For some reason, I was really you know, attracted to it. I learned about shadow work when I was in middle school um, from the girl who worked there. Um, there were books on angels, pendulums, which, uh, which I still have now. There were oracle cards, tarot cards, all that stuff. And then as I got older and I was a teenager, I worked at a theme park. And in that theme park, I was asked to do tarot readings and palm readings. Um, 
for their Halloween gimmicky kind of thing. Well, that turned out to be a very real experience. I was doing readings on people and I didn't have the wherewithal how to protect myself energetically. And so that caused a lot of issues on the spiritual dimensions. Uh, So I shut it off for a very long time. And then something brought me back in uh, to that whole world. And it was when I was playing music in Dallas for my friend Kalina. She was singing and I was playing the piano. And um, the the big calling happened there at a museum that was in Dallas. And I it was like I heard it loud and clear. It was basically saying that it was time to get back into this. So during that whole course of time, I always had this connection to ancient Egypt. And I couldn't fully explain why I had that connection, but I would get emotional reactions. Like my body would do certain things. I would feel certain things. And I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about. Maybe not about Egypt, but maybe about a different past ancient lifetime. And so I began to follow that. And I went and did a a meditation for the Akashic Records. And as I did that meditation, I began to see myself as a female ancient Egyptian woman back in ancient Egypt, obviously. And I saw myself at the Nile River. I saw myself at the palaces. I was beautiful. I had these delicate fingers, um, gauzy-like fabrics draping from me. I was a beautiful, voluptuous lady. And what I learned there was that I was a seer for the royals at the time. And I saw all these different scenes and um, I even saw a scene where my my grandmother in this lifetime was actually my grandfather in that lifetime and was eating at a table with me. So it was really cool to see all these awarenesses. Well, that one experience is what kind of gave me the click and said, this is what you're supposed to be doing. You are supposed to connect in with past lives and then help other people connect to theirs. And so I did. And here we are talking about this. So that's a little bit of backstory for those of you that don't know who I am and are just learning about me now. I have had the pleasure of doing past lives on all kinds of people. I have led very famous celebrities in past life connections. I've done big group dynamics where we do group activations. And it's fun because a lot of the times people will see Um, the same memories, but as different characters within the past life as other people in the room. And they won't even have known each other. And that'll be the first time they've met each other in this life. So it's really cool. And then I do one-on-ones with all kinds of people. I've done it with architects, business owners, artists, um, singers, uh, actors, you name it, I've done it. Lawyers. Uh, It comes from all walks of life. And it's just something that might call to people for where they are. And that awareness stays with them. It becomes this beautiful memory that you get to carry with you. Because when you go through a past life regression, you're actually seeing yourself in that lifetime. You can look down at your body and see what you're wearing. Um, You can walk through the scenes. And they are memories that you cannot erase. You just, they will always forever be with you now. Um, And those memories and the awarenesses that you get actually unfold over time. So even though you see something at one point, you're actually going to see the different levels unfold as the years carry on. Things make more sense. You meet some of the people finally that you saw in these past lifetimes. um, Or you even heal things down the line with people in this lifetime that you need to heal with. So Again, it's all across the board, Um, and it's a beautiful experience to be able to facilitate it. I'm not the one that tells you what your past lives are. You are the one that gets to access your soul records, your soul information, to see it firsthand and reaccount it. We record this session. It's so much fun. So that's a little bit of the backstory about past lives, how I work with people. And I don't want to spend too much time on that because I do want to make this more of a practical, educational um, series on this particular season. Okay. So as we go through, some of you are probably like, I still don't understand past lives. I still don't really fully get it. So 
When we're thinking about past lives, it's a general kind of statement because past lives really means other lives. In the quantum universe, which is what we live in, where everything exi is existing all at once, we're just tuning into a specific experience in our lifetime that allows us to learn what our soul wants to learn. And for me, I'm doing this right now, recording this for you. So I am tuned in and focused on the Derek that is in this dimension and having this experience. But every other experience still exists in the universe of all things, and it's happening simultaneously. But I'm focused here on this particular experience. So when you tune into a past life, you're really tuning into another life. Some people say future lives. Some people say parallel lives. So we can just say other lifetimes that you live or have lived or were focused on. Um, now, in a linear sense, you might think of that as an ancient timeline or you might think of that in the 1920s because in this particular dimension, that's how it moves. It's moving in a linear sense so that you can unfold in this particular way. And that's how we can work with ancestral energies from this particular linear timeline. But in the grand scheme of things, it's all cyclical. If we look at the laws of nature, we're going to see that that time is really cyclical um, and that everything moves on cycles. Look at the seasons. Uh, look at how the sun and the moon cycle through. Uh, look at how the, the earth turns. Look at the um, ebb and flow of the ocean. Nature is always showing us how time actually is. It's on a rhythm. All right. So if you, also, if you learn about the seven hermetic principles, you'll learn more about how the universal laws um, actually unfold uh, in natural order. Or you study any of the Vedic knowledge. The ancient Vedic knowledge will help you understand the cycles of nature. Um, but that's how we want to think about this, because you don't want to think it's just in a linear sense. You want to think of time in a cycle. So it's going to be this spiral, if you will. And that spiral goes around in circles and circles and circles. And it circles back around over some of the same timelines, which is why we get the same opportunities to work on specific aspects that we need to heal. So sometimes we're like, oh my God, why are we, why am I having this experience again? It's like I'm meeting the same person in a different body and having to go through all this over again. Well, it's true because everything is cyclical. And until we heal those things or we work on those things, why we're being brought back to that, that trigger point or that cycle point, we are going to keep doing that cycle around until we choose something different, until we heal the thing within us or make a new decision that will help us on the trajectory of that upward cycle. Because what is it? Why are we all up in, this, in an upward cycle? What is this spiraling around going? What are we being taught here? Well, we're all moving from this idea of separation into unification. We are all evolving back into group consciousness and from that group consciousness all evolving back into unity where we all come from. So it's this constant um, evolution of from that separation, that expansive separation where everything seems separate back into unification. So as human beings... We are experiencing things so separate. You, me, that thing, this thing. But really, it's all different vibrating aspects of one unified field. One total wholeness. One universe. One God, if you will. So, pure consciousness. All right? So, we're all evolving back into that space. So, it's very important that we understand and we pull that apart because we want to understand that this is all simultaneous. It's like one big universal field of energy and we're just tuning into specific aspects about it, okay? So as we go along and we're tuning into other lifetimes, we in this particular embodiment are it vibrating at a specific speed. We are having a specific experience uh, and that's vibrating with another lifetime or many lifetimes that we also have. So if I'm, let's say, experiencing, um, you know what, let me use this example. So I have this really weird thing where if I go somewhere high, my body reacts. I'm not afraid mentally of being at heights but my physical body will have this crazy reaction 
to heights. So I was up on Angel's Landing in Zion and my body was like going through a whole experience, even though my mind was like, what? This is fine. Keep going. You can go up to the top. It's fine. I was at the in Vegas at the the um, the Eiffel Tower and my body freaked out there too and it prevented me from going up in the real Eiffel Tower in Paris <laughs> because my body, it was just freaking out. So I have this weird thing with heights where my body will physically react and I can't control it. So when I did my very first past life regression, it was in Hawaii, in Kona, um, and we were training for the whole program and for QHHD. And I had this vision of me uh, as a Native American of the of an Apache, and I had I was like, what a, what is this? I was like, I see this village, I see you know brown skinned people, I see these little huts, and I couldn't fully explain what was going on. I was just reporting the scene, and then one of the scenes comes up, and I see myself standing at the edge of a cliff, and I had. I couldn't tell if I jumped off or if I was pushed off or what, but something says that I had actually jumped off the edge of this cliff. And so as I was kind of correlating this, I was finding that my fear, this like physical fear, it was being shown to me of where this physical reaction comes from when having this this experience at heights on different levels and it's because of this lifetime as a native american where i had to jump off of the cliff and that's how i had died in that lifetime and so my higher self my my akashic records had revealed to me that this was the cause of why i have this physical reaction to heights So it helps me understand myself better. It was kind of a funny awareness, if you ask me. I was just like, oh, that's funny. Like, okay, I was just shown why I have these fears. The same thing happened for why I was shown I have fears about drowning in the ocean. I was shown the same thing. So we're given these awarenesses for why certain things can happen in this lifetime. Now, it could be something like that, or it could be something you're shown about a life change that you're being called to do and you can't explain why. You might not be able to understand why you really want to change from one career to another and it makes no sense. A past life connection can actually show you that your soul history, your soul signature is actually really involved with where it is that you feel like you need to go. And having that understanding will allow you to trust yourself more and give yourself more credit and support that decision so that you know that you're not just, um, you know, creating a, a rash decision or something doesn't make sense and you're going to find yourself in a hole. Maybe it's just time that your soul is calling you to go in that direction. Okay? So these are some of the awarenesses of why we can have past life connections. And yes, there are the healing aspects. There's some things that we have, a lot of it comes down to fear. The fears that we allow us to hold ourselves back from achieving great things or bigger things that we want to achieve in this life. And sometimes when we see a past life that's connected to that fear, what happens is the awareness of where that comes from in the moment will clear it. Because then we see, oh, look, this is actually not a fear that's alive. That's, that, that's something that was created in this lifetime. This happens to come from an imprint from another lifetime. And helping me see this in a different lifetime allows me to work with the energy now. It allows me to see that, you know what? This is actually not from this lifetime. I can clear this. I can let this go. And what the biggest thing that you want to do when coming to these awarenesses is is you ask the question, what am I meant to learn through the experience? Why was I shown this? What is the purpose behind the images and the visions and the awarenesses that I've come to? When you can extract the purpose and the lesson of why you are having that experience in that lifetime, you can apply it to how and why and what you're having the experience for in this one. Because everything's quantum. It's all entangled. Oh, that's a good one. Quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement says that any things that were, like two things that were connected at once, 
will always forever remain connected. So if one becomes affected in one space in the universe, it will vibrate with the other one and, and have a resonance. So if you can change something about yourself right now in this lifetime, it's going to vibrate with that other lifetime that you live that's connected to it and it's going to heal it because you're choosing to heal it. Now on the flip side, if you keep playing into that fear or that trauma or that, that aspect of the experience, it's still going to resonate with that other particle or or you know, version of you in another part of the universe, and it's still going to activate that level. So what it is, is you have the opportunity in this lifetime right here, right now, to be able to clear it, to work with the energy and heal it across the universe. And that's what quantum entanglement is. So they usually equate it in modern science to uh, like photons of light. So if two photons of light were connected in at once and they separated and you put them one on the one side of the universe and well, you know what I mean, like something over there in some part of the universe and this other photon of light in this other part of the universe they're still going to affect each other because they're still connected. You see? So you have the power to really change the Akashic timelines of you, your ancestors, everything you've been connected with, which is also why ancestors come in and guide us in this lifetime. Not only are they guiding us towards greater joy and happiness, but they're also helping to um, connect us to the things we need to heal about things from our, our ancestral lineage. And they will help us to do those in different ways. And you can kind of see how that plays out in your own life now. Like you can see how certain things in your in your um, experience with family, like you're the one that has to make the new change. You're the one that has to change, like uh, has to be the healer. You're the black sheep. I actually call it the black unicorn because it's a magical and connected spirit. Um, but, you know, and more majestic, if you will. I'm also funnily looking, funnily, funnily looking at a unicorn um, on this astronomy sphere that I have in front of me that shows the different constellations. It's literally right in front of my face. So um, look at that little synchronicity at 2202. So I think that you can access whatever level of your past lives that feel most um, in connected to you now. You can do that to heal something. You can do that for, um, for fun. You can do it just because you're curious or you want to validate something that you uh, have become aware of. It's up to you. It's all across the board. So as you can see, in this first episode, um, I'm kind of free-flowing and talking and just bringing forward whatever wants to come forward as an overview. And a lot of the aspects that I'm bringing forward now, I will elaborate on in future episodes. So if there was something I touched on and then I moved on to a next segment, well, that's because these are kind of the ideas that are surfacing up that will unfold in future episodes as we continue this journey. So don't fret. Um, And those of you that are not aware, I am in a master's program for consciousness and human potential where we combine science, modern science, spirituality, neuroscience, um, ancient wisdom and all the magical things like that and transcendental meditation. Um, It combines all of that. So you're going to hear me speak with words that go from science to spirituality to really out there kind of stuff um, to really human levels as well. And I'm going to go all across the board with it um, because I allow spirit to kind of just connect and communicate through me for whatever needs to come forward at the time, uh, like channeling, basically. So... um, If there are specific questions that people have, please feel free to email me and let me know questions that you have. Please engage with me. You can follow me on Instagram at Derek Jameson, D-E-R-E-K-J-A-M-E-S-O-N. You can also just email me at wonderfullightbody at gmail.com, spelled all the way it sounds, wonderfullightbody body at gmail.com and send me any questions of things you want me to talk about in future episodes. I will totally bring that up because that's the most fun is when people have questions. I tend to work as an oracle. So when people ask a question, information comes forward around the energy um, surrounding it. All right. So 
that's a little bit about past lives and parallel lives. Again, when it comes to future lives and things like that, you can tune into other lifetimes. So it doesn't matter if it's a lifetime that you haven't lived yet. It is one of the lifetimes that you will. And sometimes it's important that you see that version of yourself. You see something from the past. You see something for the future because it's going to allow you to see that your soul signature all embodies um, the same thing that it does now. Whatever you're inclined to, whatever you're called to do, you need to see that as well. And many, 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 many people do tend to see future lives. Some of them see future architecture in this dimension of our reality, but many people are seeing lives that don't associate with human life. So they're seeing things that are extraterrestrial, if you will. Um, But really, is it really extraterrestrial if it's just us in another lifetime? I don't know. That's up for you to decide. But yes, many people are seeing a lot of the extraterrestrial lifetimes. Right now, many people are seeing also the Atlantean lifetimes because that is a big aspect of what we are here to heal. Um, some people are seeing their Orion lifetimes from different from the Orion star system. Um, many people are connected to different stars like Sirius and the Pleiades. Um, and so they're connecting with those aspects of them from those other lifetimes. So you can't be surprised if all of a sudden you start connecting with extraterrestrial consciousness or lifetimes that you live in other star systems. Let's see. You can also see lifetimes of you as animals. You will see certain animal archetypes that you are in another lifetime. And a lot of the times it's because that animal that you were is trying to teach you something for this lifetime right now. It's simply up to you to receive the information and to be able to translate it and see what it is that it's teaching you. Now, also... um, Within these, you might not see an animal. You could see organisms and you could see yourself as air. You could see yourself as a spirit. You could see yourself as pure energy. You could see anything in your imagination that you could possibly be. Some people have seen the fairy lifetimes, the dragon energies. Some people have seen... um, everything up and down here and there you name it some people will see where you go after this lifetime and some people see where you came from right before this lifetime i had past life regressions where people were seeing um how they were prepared how their soul was prepared before coming in and how all these angels came around them in this golden temple and began to prepare this young soul for the um, descent into the earth plane and how all these spirits were there to help support them and prepare them. Um, It is quite miraculous what is truly beyond this physically vibrating dimension that we are um, experiencing right now. And remember that In the grand scheme of all of the universe, around 95% is energy, what we cannot see. So we are experiencing the bare minimum (laughs) of reality because there's all these other levels. And how do we experience those other levels? It's all vibration. So if you want to tap into those higher frequencies of light, you want to tap into that Akashic information, it's important that you begin to transcend the physical body. If you are so focused on your physicality, you're too focused on the dimensions that vibrate so densely that you can't access that information. So it's about learning how to transcend, opening yourself up to those higher dimensional energies, those subtle spaces, and then enlivening that within you and bringing it back into this particular life. So as a physical human being, you can transcend through transcendental meditation. You can tune into the quantum field, enliven that field within you, enliven the the unified field within you, that pure consciousness And then as you carry on taking action in your daily life, you are living your life through that energy. It is enlivened within your physiology, your mind, your spirit, your body, your emotions, and you're operating everything from that awareness. It is awakened within you, but it takes practice. 
So I want you to be able to take some time to become still, to tune in to the unified field, to release and let go of the physicality, and to tap into your greater total self. When you begin to enliven that, you'll be able to pick up past lifetime information so fast, so efficiently, without question, without doubt, and just being able to access your soul's information at a moment's notice. What I would like to do now is I'm going to ask you a few questions. Now that we've been talking about past lives and all the different ways that they kind of show up, and we will elaborate with that more in future episodes, what is a past life or another lifetime that is surfacing for you now? What's coming up for you? Or what's an event or an experience you're having in life that might be a little challenging right now? How can it be related to another lifetime? How can you change the dynamic now that allows you to be able to change it quantumly so that we neutralize the charge in the quantum entanglement? I want you to take a minute and I want you to close your eyes. Just close your eyes and take a deep breath in through your nose, nice and slow and out through your mouth and releasing any tension within your mouth and in your body. I want you to recognize that your heart rate is slowing down. Your mind is slowing down. All the brain waves are now coming into coherence, becoming rested and receptive. The brain waves are calming down nice and easy. Nice neutral breathing through your nose, in through the nose, nice and slow. Out through the nose, nice and slow. Breathing in and out. Now I want you to set the intention that you're connecting with another lifetime that is vibrating with you now. Now this may come as a thought or a feeling or you may have a full vision. It's up to you what happens to come for you. But I want you to ask that question and set that intention. What lifetime wants to come forward for me to see it now or to know it now or to be aware of it now. And then I want you to practice allowing answers to come. Don't go searching for it. Don't go forcing it. The universe moves effortlessly in the direction of greater joy and happiness. So just allow it to come. So if you were to pick a lifetime that's maybe vibrating and connecting with you now, based off of your first thought, your feeling or impression, what would it be? Just pick something, even if it feels like you're making it up. Just pick something. It could be really easy. Now that you've picked that thing, and if you haven't, just pick it real quick. Now that you've picked whatever it is that lifetime may be, I want you to ask the question, what am I supposed to learn about this lifetime? And now what do you get? Remember, you're going to go with the first thought, feeling, or impression that you get. Go with the first thought. What are you supposed to learn about the connection to this lifetime? How does it relate to where you are at in this lifetime at this moment? Good. Remember, just go with the first thought, feeling, or impression. Really easy. No pressure. And if you're not getting too much now, that's okay. It could be one word, one thought. 
We're just going to take it nice and easy. Now, what's the lesson and purpose you're meant to learn about that? Why would that come forward now? What do you want to do with it? Is it just an awareness or do you need to clear it? Do you need to work with it? It's really up to you. Take a moment to let that settle in. Now, I want you to come back into this space, into this room. Bring your awareness back in and take a big deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. I want you to feel your legs, feel your hands and your body and just ground yourself here in this dimension, planet Earth, and come back to full awareness. Now you see, a simple connection like that allows us to start tapping into past life information. We settled our brain waves, and brain waves are going to be the biggest thing that you can work with to allow yourself to receive information. Not only that, but when you settle your brain waves, you're actually helping to relieve the stress that accumulates in your physiology and in your mind. So allowing yourself to go into that little receptive state, allowing the brain waves to slow down, you're allowing your physiology to actually effectively operate. And not only that, you're picking up on psychic information. So I told you to go with the first thought, feeling, or impression because that's the way that you are going to be able to start tapping in and opening those channels. You just go with the first thought, Go with the first thought because you're not too deep now. You're not going to have a big visionary experience, but some of you may. Some of you may see things right away. It depends on how open those channels are. But that's where I want to come in here in this series, and I want to help us open up those channels. So we'll be doing different fun processes, um, maybe third eye activations, things like that. That's going to help you expand your consciousness and your ability to receive psychic information and past life information. So I hope you had fun on this first episode. We kind of went down and rambled off a bunch of things that deal with past lives, future lives, the quantum field, spirituality, science, and all the magical things. So I would love to hear from you. So please send me that email, wonderfullightbody.com at gmail.com or message me on Derek at Derek Jameson on Instagram. And um, if you're interested in having a QHHT session, you know, those sessions are longer sessions, but they're deep healing sessions. Those are only in person. You can go ahead and request that. If you're looking for a meditation that's a past life meditation with me, you can also do that. But that is not a QHHT session. That is a different experience. So let me know what your thoughts are. I hope that you are excited to join me on this second series journey to see what we can uncover about your past lives, understanding past lives, knowing how to work with them. And in the end, it's all about expanding consciousness and evolving towards greater joy and happiness. I am so excited to see you, work with you, uh, collaborate with you. And if you want more information, you can check out wonderfullightbody.com.